Okay, so this is a, basically an introduction to Chapter 5, and Chapter 5 is all focused on the goal of what we call strong and sustainable economic growth. So, this is just a quote from Glenn Stevens. The economy's potential to supply probably rises at about 3% a year, give or take a bit. If demand is rising at 4 or 5 or 6, which in various years it has, sooner or later you're going to reach the point where you're stretching our supply capacity. You want to grow above trend to use up the capacity, but once you have done that, you have to slow down to something more in line with the economy's medium-term growth or potential supply. And that probably has a three at the front of it. Three or three or a quarter or something like that. You cannot have demand growth at five and expect that that will not give you a problem of inflation. So basically what they're saying is Australia is able to increase its growth by about three and a half to four percent a year because of new technology, immigration, better infrastructure, etc. If we grow faster than that, we can sustain it for a short period of time, but eventually we're going to reach our productive capacity. So we can grow at 5 and 6% for a little while, but eventually we're going to get to basically where we call the vertical line. So we can really only grow at 35 to 4% without seeing excessive inflation, because that's how quickly we can push out our supply curve. Okay, so the goal is strong and sustainable economic growth, and you need to be able to define each little part of this goal to get full marks. So it's the fastest rate of economic growth, measured by an increase in real or chain volume GDP, consistent with strong employment growth, you've got to mention employment, but without causing excessive inflation, external instability, which basically means we're not going into too much debt or excessive current account deficit, or environmental pressures. So we're not using up all our resources. And it's generally around 3 to 3.5% three a year, because that's how quickly we can increase supply. So your definition of strong and sustainable growth, and this will be worth two marks, so you've got to include all of this. The fastest rate of economic growth, consistent with employment, but without causing excessive inflation, excessive debt, or environmental pressures. And, and this will currently be currently at around 3.5% three a year, which is very a uh, loose definition, but it's about 3 to 3.5%. Three you've got to men mention this. You've got to mention external instability, inflation, employment, and... Um, real or change volume GDP in your answer. Okay, note in periods of strong productivity growth, it is possible for us to grow at 4% um, and still be sustainable because we're boosting our productive capacity by that much. Um, but generally, Australia is not able to increase its productivity this quick, so we, can, we will have inflation if we grow at 4%. But there has been times in our history where we've been able to increase our productive capacity by 4%, and therefore we've been able to grow without inflation and pressure. And that's, why, that's why China's been able to grow at 10% and still not experience excessive inflation, because they're able to do this. Benefits of economic growth. Okay, so these are some of the key benefits of economic growth for an economy. Increased derived demand for labour. So basically, if we're growing faster, we need more workers because we're producing more. That helps to lower unemployment. It boosts factor incomes. More people have a job, so they're able to earn higher wages, higher interest on their savings because we save more. A higher dividends because share prices will generally go up. Economic growth provides greater taxation revenue for the government. That's a big benefit. More people have jobs, more income tax. Companies make more money because they're producing more and selling more. Higher company tax. Gives us the opportunity to provide more foreign aid because we have more money to supply. The government's got more money to provide foreign aid because we're in surpluses rather than deficits. More people have a job, so our material living standards are satisfied. And people with jobs generally will experience higher self-esteem, happiness, um, more chance of developing friendships because they're going out and meeting people. So there's sort of like key six key benefits of high economic growth. Costs of economic growth, well, it can cause damage to the natural environment if they're using all our scarce resources. Um, it can lead to structural unemployment. If we're growing because we're using more capital or machinery, um, that can be a way that we become more productive, but it can lead to unemployment. So sometimes growth is not just synonymous with employment. Um, and as I said, it's to do with productivity and technological progress. It can lead to inflation if we grow too fast. It can be a cause of inequality in income distribution. So some people are developing all the wealth while others aren't developing any. Um, and it can also lead to a culture of materialism where we just want to get richer and richer, which can be bad for our non-material living standards. Okay, so basically this red line represents our productive capacity, grows around 35 to 4% every year. Um, and it's like the speed limit at which we can grow. If we're able to get our productive capacity steeper, then we can grow at a faster rate. And that's why China can grow, as I said, again, at a faster rate than Australia. Okay, so why don't we want economic growth above 5%? Because the pace of the economy would progress beyond its speed limit or beyond our productive capacity. It's going to cause inflation, okay, well above our target range of 2 to 
And that's because more people have a job, there'll be tighter labour markets, so higher wages, and there'll be pressure on our resources. Because inflation is higher, we're going to import more. That's going to lead to trade deficits. It's going to lead to more debt for our economy. Because we're ex importing a lot more than we're exporting, we're going into more debt. So it causes inflation, it causes excessive debt, and it can decrease our non-material living standards because it can lead to an overuse of our natural resources. It can overuse, over, overuse um, non-renewable resources. It can also lead to increased stress and reduced quality of life if people are working too long, many, too many hours. Okay, so why can Australia grow out of why does Australia grow at around four percent or three and a half percent, while China, you can see here, is growing. Blue line is all around sort of the eight to ten percent range. Well, productivity is increasing a lot faster in China. Okay, they have new technology, so they're able to improve their productivity, and therefore they can meet excess demand without with increased supply, and, and therefore don't experience inflation. They've also invested a lot in capital and labour. So they've invested a lot in the education of their workforce, and if people are more educated, they're more productive. And they've also invested a lot in their infrastructure and research and development. And you've got to remember, growth is all about sort of getting from one point to the other. So if China's starting at a lower base, and therefore they're able to increase that quicker, then they will have experienced higher growth. For Australia, our education levels have been quite high for a long period of time, so we're only able to increase it in sort of small increments. Okay, so this basically just shows you how quick countries are expected to grow over the next sort of 40 years, starting with 2009. You can see Vietnam at the top, all the way down to most of your European nations like Germany and Italy, and then unfortunately Japan down the bottom as well. And Australia expected to grow at around 2.4%. Okay, and that, again, that comes into that idea of how quickly we can boost our technology and infrastructure. Okay, so we want to keep demand and supply in balance. Australia's potential to supply increases by about 3 to 4% a year because of immigration and education, new resources, better technology, and better productivity. So we want to grow demand by about the same amount. If it grows by faster, we will experience inflation. If it grows by less, we will experience unemployment and lower material living standards. Okay? We want to operate on the elbow. Demand and supply imbalance, constantly push this out and constantly increase this. So we continually get similar prices at a higher level of real GDP. Thank you.